Chapter 78 The Pirates He woke up to a changed world. Hugh Hugh, son of Hugh Hugh, grandson of Hugh Hugh, and great-grandson of Hugh Hugh, had lived a terrible life. He had been but a handful of years old when they had all been taken, his mothers and sisters torn away and that terrible thing that called herself Big Mama came. She had forced things into him and the world seemed to go bright and cheerful even when it wasn't. There had been women, strange women, many women. Many of them had been very, very nice. They had made things better even when the drugs had worn off and he had been reduced to shivering and horrible, horrible headaches. It had lasted for so long with only the occasional message from his family. They were hostage against him. If he ran, if he fought, they would be hurt. They would be killed. He had to stay. Everything had been awful and horrible and wrong. Then it had all changed. Days ago, not even a full week ago, and he had been carried out of his stable from where Big Mama had kept him. He had been given medicine that made the headache so very weak and easy to handle. He started to heal, to grow stronger with as much food as he could eat instead of just the scraps that Mama would allow him to stay alive, but not to grow fat. He then thought things were going bad as he met Madame Horny, but she was so very different. Apparently, she had hated Big Mama and was only pretending to be mean to scare her off. There had been men wandering around, a lot of them, strong men, proud men, men that were equals to the women around them. They were preparing for something. But the headache was still such a distraction. He pushes everything away as he goes for the headache pills beside his bed. There's some water there to help them down and they sit fairly well. He finishes the water and thinks for a few minutes with his head slowly clearing. Feeling comes back to his scales and he rubs his arms and legs as a pins and needles feeling pushes through quickly and then fades. There's a knock on his door. That's one of the strange things about his new life. They ask his permission to come in. He considers ignoring it and getting more sleep. It's very tiring just to be awake these days. He shakes his head and gives his whole body a shake. He smooths his pajamas as a bit of a nervous habit. Those are new too. Sleeping in anything but his natural scales was strange. But the expectation of his clothes looking great was something he was still following even if he didn't have to. He walks up to the door and after a moment of consideration unlocks it from his side. Another new strangeness he can lock the room. He reaches up to the doorknob and opens it to see what his day is starting with. The sight of his mother and sisters stuns him. Oh, so I haven't woken up yet, he remarks and the dream figure of his mother breaks down into helpless giggles before reaching in and pulling him into a hug. This? This is a dream, right? He asks. It's very real. Remember what I taught you? A pinch to wake up? His mother asks, and he reaches down to the sensitive tip of his tail and gives it a painful squeeze and tug. Nothing changes. She's still here. He slowly returns the hug as a sob starts breaking out. Shh, shh. It's okay, baby. Mommy's here. You're going to be fine. Everything's going to be better. Mommy and your sisters and your wives, we're all here for you. This is real? Dreams aren't this. This. He breaks into further sobs and he's pulled into a deeper hug into his mother's soft green skin as she hums a soothing tune. It's real. It's very, very real. Come. Your sisters are speaking with your wives. They're getting along well. Did you know that for your sake, some of your wives actually helped make this world a better place? The Scorchin and Lean families are no more for their love of you and others who love those like you, Humir says kindly. Can I just... It's been so long. Hugh Hugh asks, and she nods before snuggling closer. He's changed. She's sort of changed. But things are good anyways. Her scent, her love, her heartbeat are all the same. Then she leads him from the hallway and into the outdoors. There is everyone he knows and loves. They tell him everything and he assures them each time, while also feeling smaller and smaller. They had all been through so much, been hurt so badly. 
His mother and sisters were slaves. His wives had been slaves in all but name to the Scorchin and Lean. His family had endured unending horror. His wives had been in the thick of it and had helped break the horrors of the world. He hadn't done anything but wait around to be rescued. Still, what he can do is help make everyone feel better, and that's what he does. That's all he's good for anyways. His repertoire is hugs, calm words of assurance, promises of love, and a very gentle demeanor. But it feels so frail and fragile compared to all their strength. After a time, the guilt eats away at him, and he says he's going to get himself a drink of water. He is somewhat thirsty anyways, and it will give him an excuse to not let them see him break down in frustration. He has to persuade them that this is fine and that he can get it himself and they've done so much already he can fetch a little water. He asks if anyone else wants some, but it's rejected all around as none of them want to burden him, a reminder at just how frail he is. He finishes his excuses and wanders off. He'll claim he got a little lost on the way back if this takes too long. You look like you've bounced down the side of a mountain, a deep voice says as he's about to enter the building with the nearest kitchen. He looks around in shock before backing up and seeing the man sitting on the roof with his legs crossed. You, your 4J, Foster? Hugh Hugh asks, snapping his fingers to try and make sense of things. Franklin, he answers. What are you doing up there? He asks, just sorting my head. Sometimes you feel things that don't make any sense, so you have to sort through it all to put it away properly. He answers before standing up and vanishing to reappear near Hugh Hugh. You're the adept. They said you fought the witches and won, he says in excitement. This is someone who could have gone from drugged and weak to killing Big Mama himself, and then freed his sisters and mom before ripping apart the scorchin and lean with his bare hands to rescue his wives. Not alone, but... Yes, I killed them, he answers calmly regarding Hugh Hugh oddly. But the implied question remains. What's wrong, he asks, and Hugh Hugh hangs his head. Even other men can see his frailty. It's shameful. I'm useless, Hugh Hugh admits after a few minutes, and Franklin looks considerate. How so, he asks, and the Cobe teenager sighs grandly enough for a being twice his size. I wasn't able to help anyone, only sit around and wait to be rescued. Like your mother and sisters? Franklin interrupts and Hugh Hugh looks up at him. How did you... We men talk among ourselves about strange happenings, odd coincidences, things like that. Franklin responds. It's just that I was so helpless, not able to do anything without outside help too scared of what people would do to those I love if I tried anything. Like your wives and family? Franklin asks. I'm trying to have a moment. Hugh Hugh snaps as his patience breaks. Sorry, I'm just trying to fully understand myself. What's the actual problem? Franklin asks, baffling the young Cobe. What do you mean? Feeling powerless or helpless or just frustrated all comes from somewhere. I'm chewing though a lot myself at the moment. It's mostly irrational as are a lot of things like it. So the question is, are you feeling something justified? And whether you are or not, how are you going to deal with it? Franklin explains, and Hugh Hugh looks baffled, but thinks hard. I, I feel helpless and weak. I want to be capable and strong, but how do I do that? Hugh Hugh asks after a little while. Well, what kind of strong are you looking for? Strong character, strong arms, strong mind. My team and I can help with all of that. We can give you training. But if you're feeling helpless and useless, then what you should do is help others. Prove to yourself over and over again that you have worth. The violence and bloodshed is almost completely over with on this world. For now, at least. But now, we need to rebuild. Now, we need to make things safe and secure. And you think I can help with that? Once your head is cleared of all the drugs pumping through you, yes, I do. You don't need to be big to work construction equipment or to make a meal. Or hell, if you want to be more aggressive, you can get the training needed for more martial pursuits. We will need sheriffs and guards and combat pilots. What? We've taken the world. Now we need to make it worth holding. 
After that, we need to hold it against other scumbags coming in. Combat pilot? A defense against planetary bombardments and invasions. It'll be rapid response strike fighters to get in and shatter enemy ships before heading back to base. Franklin remarks, and Hugh Hugh's mind wanders for a moment as he pictures the sky blurring by before erupting into space to launch a massive barrage of plasma and lasers into the underside of a massive enemy ship. Wow, what kind of training would that take? He asks, and Franklin smiles. A lot of time in a flight simulator and in practice flights to start with. We're basically going to be building these ships out of the fastest ships we stole from the Sky Marauders and strapping the big laser cannons we got out of their stronghold to make them into soaring artillery that's too fast to counter. And what do you mean by a sheriff? Law enforcement with a lot of wiggle room. Basically, they're the person in charge of deciding which laws are most important to pay attention to and which aren't. Of course, that generally means carrying the biggest and meanest weapon possible to scare the more belligerent into stopping their stupidity, Franklin explains, and Hugh Hugh considers. You, what if I could be both? If you were to sign up for such a thing, we'd encourage it. The strike fighters will need to be positioned at strategic points, and every community will need a sheriff. Franklin explains, and Hugh Hugh's mind begins to churn before there's a slight spike of pain. You're still in rehab from that shit Big Mama fed you. Take the time to consider before you make any big decision. Only then will we accept an application, Franklin says calmly. But that's an ow. Hugh Hugh tries a little too hard to think, and the headache returns. A month at most, Franklin says. Just focus on healing for now. Frustration and anger at not somehow pulling off an impossible miracle are common when you come out of a disaster or stressful situation, Franklin says. Believe me, I know. Doesn't mean I like it. You don't have to like it. You have to deal with it, Franklin says. And Hugh Hugh looks at him in surprise at the sudden harshness. Franklin merely shrugs. A big part of being strong is to be able to ignore small pains. You want to be strong? Getting over your feelings is part of it. Stand firm, even when a tide seeks to bowl you over, be it one of actual water or one of emotion. So you're saying not to feel? Not at all. I'm saying don't be compromised by it. I'm dealing with a lot right now myself, but I'm not letting it stop me. That's one thing that makes me strong, something you can get right now if you want to. I can't just suddenly not feel, Hugh Hugh protests. It's not that at all. It's about growing stronger and stronger until you can push it aside, until you can deal with it a bit at a time, Franklin answers. Oh? Looks like I've held you up longer than expected. Madam Hugh Mir, I apologize for holding up your son, Franklin says and Hugh Hugh turns to see his mother walking up. Oh no, it's a good thing that he has some men to look up to. There are so few men around that it can be lonely for a young man, Hugh Mir says and Franklin chuckles. Regardless, he was expected and I got in the way of that, I'm sorry, he says before vanishing outright in another teleport.